we're gonna look at some triangles within triangles. Um, I have some parallel lines right here. And since I have parallel lines right here, I've got some similar triangles. I have this large triangle and then I have this small triangle. So we have some similar triangles there. Um, these are fairly easy problems, very specific style problem, but um, we're finding the length of NR. I'm gonna put an X right there. And there's several different ways we can set up our proportion on these. The most basic way for me is this part is to this part, nine is to six, as X is to four. So just different sides of this larger triangle. This is uh, the ratio of this part to this part is the same as this part to this part. We cross multiply six times X equals nine times four. That's six X equals 36 and divide by six, you get X equals six. Similarly, um, on this one, it says find the length of NL. So NL is from there all the way down there. So it wants this whole side. I'm gonna make this question mark in X right here for us. Um, so I've had this whole side, X, matches up over here to 18. And then we're gonna go back to this side, 11, matches up with nine over here. Uh, you can cross multiply 9x equals whatever 11 times 18 is. Um, I'm going to kind of do that in my head and get, is that 22, I think? 22. Next style of problem is I definitely have some triangles with a triangle. Um, I have a right triangle and... There was an altitude drawn down towards the hypotenuse, and that created a large triangle, the outside one, a medium-sized triangle over here, and then the small triangle on this side. So I, I have three different triangles right here, and I wanna draw these out, and I, I think it's gonna help us out. So I have a small and a medium and a large triangle, okay? So let's draw the small, we'll make the medium a little bit bigger, and then the large the biggest, okay? So if I'm looking just at this small triangle right here, just the small triangle, the hypotenuse on that is right here. We have a, you know, we have a right angle right there. So the hypotenuse is X, and the smallest side is 36, and we're not given this medium side right here in the smallest triangle. So we fill it in all that we know. In the medium triangle, so I'm just looking at this one, I see that 64 looks like it's the medium side on the medium triangle right there. I'm not given the hypotenuse, I'm not given the smallest side, that's all that I know, the medium side on there, okay? So when I look at the large side, uh, large triangle, I'm given the smallest side, X, and I'm given the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Now, it's two different numbers, but the whole side, you know, like that part 64, that's 36. The whole thing is 100, okay? And so then I look at my triangles and I say, okay, which two triangles can I match up corresponding parts? Well, the small triangle and the large triangle both have their smallest sides, and the hypotenuse labeled. So I can match those up. I can say X, the hypotenuse over here, matches up with 100 over there, and 36 in the small triangle matches up with X over here. And then I can just cross multiply and solve. So I've got X times X, I'll write that out, X times X equals 36 times 100, that's X squared, equals 3,600. The opposite of squaring something is taking the square root of something. So we'll square root both sides and we'll get X equals 60. Let's look at another one of these. So on the back of your page, I think it's right there. Either way, just copy this one down. Um, I have a right triangle, triangles within a triangle. I'm gonna write out my small, medium, and large triangle. So I've got my small, my medium triangle and my large triangle. So let's draw it like this and a little bit bigger and then the biggest one. 
And if I look at my smallest triangle over here, so that's my small triangle, the hypotenuse is 60. The smallest side is 36. And I'm not given this medium side over here. Um, if I look at the medium triangle over here, kind of on the right side, I'm not given the hypotenuse. I'm not given the small side. I could write what this side is. I don't think it's gonna help me, but I could write what that side is. That would be this whole length X minus that 36. So let's just write that just to sound smart. So that medium side would be X minus 36. The large triangle I'm given, so I'm looking at just the outside now. I'm given the large side, that's X, the hypotenuse. And then the smallest side is 60, that's down here. And then I'm looking for which ones match up. Does the small match up with the medium? No, this one only had one part. Does the small match up with the large? Yeah, because I got hypotenuse and the smallest side. So now we're going to say 60 over here. The hypotenuse matches up with the hypotenuse over there. And then the smallest side matches up with the smallest side over here. And then cross multiply. We'll get 36x equals 60 times 60 and 60 times 60 is 3,600. Divide by 36 on both sides and you get X equals 100. And lastly, let's look at these. These go hand in hand with the first set that we did. Um, looks like this, you know, where we were matching up this part of this side matches up with this part of that side and this part of that side matches up with this part of that side. Um, in the first set, we were given that um, these lines were parallel and in this one it's asking us are these lines parallel so it gives us all of the sides all the answers and it wants to know is LK this line parallel to UT so what we're going to do is the same thing that we did on the first one on the first one we were missing one of those sides and we set up a proportion and solve for X so we're going to set up a proportion this time we're going to match up 110 to 88, and then we're gonna match up 30 to 24. And if, when we reduce those, we get, you know, one half equals one half, or five equals five, or whatever the fraction is, then those lines are parallel. If we get like two thirds equals three over four, then they're not parallel. We need to make sure that we're multiplying by the same scale factor on both sides. So, when I reduce these, 110 over 88, is going to be 5 over 4. And when I reduce 30 over 24, that would be 5 over 4. So yes, these are parallel. So the short you could write out, LK is parallel to UT. You could do that. Or you could write it like this. You could write LK and then put two big lines like that is parallel to UT. That'll save you some time and energy there. Okay, let's look at another one of these. So determine if BC, that line right there, is parallel to ST. So we're gonna do the same thing, gonna set up a proportion, and if we get good numbers at the end, then they're parallel, and if we don't, then they're not parallel. Then that means that BC is not parallel to that line. So I've got 52 over 44. And I've got 35 and 40. And when I reduce 52 over 44, I could divide by four. So that would be 13 over 11. And I could divide by five over here. So that would be seven over eight. Those are not equal. So that means BC is a little bit catty cornered, the ST, that it's not parallel, okay? So we would write, um, I was writing LK as the last example. I would write BC is not parallel to ST. Or you could write BC not parallel to ST. 